Welcome to the first episode of DCEU 2020. We're going to take a look at all of the DC movies since Man of Steel and consider how they work together to build a universe, primarily in light of WB's attempt to build a cinematic universe that they hoped would rival Marvel's. Now in doing this, we are going to keep in mind that WB interfered quite a bit, specifically with Suicide Squad and Justice League. And so we're not going to be focused too much on Zack Snyder. We're really only going to consider Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. And anything beyond that, we're not really going to address Snyder too much. He did have a hand in Wonder Woman, and there is some of his influence in the Justice League movie. But for the most part, we're going to treat those like they weren't his project just that they were related to his projects. So before we get into Man of Steel, I have to make it clear for those who aren't familiar with me. I am a huge Superman fan. Superman has been extremely important to me throughout my life. Whether it was the Superman animated series being one of my favorite cartoon series of all time, or the mountain of Superman comics that we got from a library book sale when I was young, I quickly latched onto Superman for a variety of reasons. There are a lot of things about the Superman character that really resonates with me, particularly in regards to fatherhood, because Superman has been a very significant character that has been invaluable in the way that I connect with my father. And the reason I say all of that is it does reflect on my experience with Man of Steel. So I just wanted to get that clear up front that it does tint my experience a little bit, and also I wanted to make it clear that I am aware of that. And so I'm hoping that that transparency can come through in my review. And so, that being said, I found that I really enjoyed the movie the first time I saw it. Subsequent views were a little bit less enjoyable, but I still enjoyed it. This view, however, I wanted to really be more critical about it and try to watch the movie without biases or at least with awareness of those biases and try to judge the movie more on its own merits and attempt to identify where those biases might be conflicting with my experience of the movie. And I found pretty early on that those biases were definitely affecting my experience of the movie. One of the complaints I've heard a lot of people level at the movie, and one that I actually hold a quite a bit, is a lot of the characters don't feel like they should. But in thinking about that when going into the movie, I was much more aware of what was going on. And as a result, I think I identified what the issue is. And what it all boils down to is, this is not the Superman I know. This is not the Clark Kent I know. This is not the Jonathan Kent I know. And that is the issue. Now the question is, should that be an issue? And that, that is where the difficulty lies. So I have two answers to that question. First answer is, no. That shouldn't be an issue. And the second answer is, it's a valid issue. So, first answer first, no, it should not be an issue. The thing is, for the story that Zack Snyder set out to tell, these are the characters that were necessary. Now, initially, I was really turned off by Jonathan Kent's willingness to allow people to die in order to protect Clark Kent's secret. Like in the scene where they're talking about the bus going off the bridge and people nearly drowning and Clark saving them, Clark asked, should I just have let all of them die? And Jonathan answers, maybe. Right, we talked about this. You have, oh, Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. And I really don't like that characterization of Jonathan Kent. And that flies against everything I've ever known or liked about the character. Like, for me, Jonathan should have been this paragon of nobility and wisdom and exemplified everything that Superman would become because Superman learned that from his parents, especially his relationship with his father. And so this characterization of Jonathan Kent flew in the face of what I knew of him. And so that was very difficult for me. But in recognizing that I had this strong concept of what it should be, and that that might be tainting my perspective of what the movie is, I decided to set aside that bias and try to just view the movie for what it is. And in doing so, I recognized that this version of Jonathan Kent, even if it's not what I know and like, 
it fit the story that Zack Snyder was trying to tell. And that same concept carries over to Clark Kent and to Superman. So one of my major complaints about the movie is that these characters are not who I feel they should be. I also recognize that these versions of the characters are what they need to be for the story that Zack Snyder is telling. And so in that light, I think they are well established and they work. And so since these are different versions of the characters, and they're not trying to be the same versions that I grew up with, I, I can accept it for what it is and acknowledge that they're done well. Like, I can fully recognize that the Superman that we get in this movie is very reflective of the way he was raised by Jonathan Kent. But then, this gets us into the second answer to the question. Namely that, yes, it's okay that my perception of what the character should be does conflict with my enjoyment of what the character is in this movie. Because, here's the thing, we've had more than three quarters of a century with Superman. And over those years, we have had different iterations of the character, and those do need to be kept in mind. But at the same time, there have been a lot of consistencies about the character that have really helped inform who and what he is. So for instance, one of the core aspects of the character for me is that he inspires hope. And not only does he inspire hope, but he is what we should all aspire to be. Like, we should all look up to Superman as this paragon of hope and virtue. And I just don't quite get that in this movie. Now, it's entirely possible, and honestly, watching the movie again this time, I feel like probable, that we weren't supposed to get that full version of Superman in this movie, but more that this movie was building towards that. And so with that in mind, I don't fault the movie for not necessarily holding up that version of Superman. However, I do feel like there were different things that could have been done in order to bring that Superman more to the forefront. And one of the critiques that I hear a lot of people level against Zack Snyder that I do kind of agree with, at least in regards to Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman, is that they take the DC Universe and they make it a bit darker than they feel that it should be. And I do agree with that. I, I do feel like Man of Steel was quite a bit darker than it should have been. For me personally, Superman should be a much lighter character, more hopeful, and I didn't really get that sense here. But despite that, I didn't feel like this was that dark of a movie. Overall, I do really enjoy Man of Steel, and I feel like it gets a lot more flack than it deserves. You know, this isn't really the characterization of the character that I would prefer, but despite that fact, I still enjoy the movie. So based off of just what was done in this movie, and what it seemed like he was building to in just this movie, I would have been interested to see Zack Snyder do a Man of Steel trilogy. I find it interesting that WB approached him after Man of Steel and gave him the reins to do Batman vs. Superman and Justice League, and at the time they intended beyond that. Whereas personally, I would have preferred if they just gave him a full Superman trilogy to work with. And if he could have built the character the way he seemed to be doing in this movie, then I think it could have been really interesting and we could have eventually got to the character that I'm talking about. The version of the character that is much more virtuous, much more confident, and has a firm place in the world as this strong figure of hope that people look up to. And we could talk more about his plans for Batman vs Superman and Justice League, but we'll save that for later more specifically when I cover Batman vs. Superman, and probably to an extent when I cover Justice League, because I'm definitely going to be talking about the divergence between Zack Snyder's Justice League and Joss Whedon's Justice League. But for now, I'll say that Man of Steel is a good movie, and I feel like if they had given Zack Snyder one or two more Superman movies, and then started trying to build a DC Universe, that it might have been a bit stronger and this would have been a good springboard for building a proper DC universe. But WB being WB, they didn't handle things well. And I, I know that's an understatement, and I know we all know that, but I just want to be clear, I blame WB more than anything. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense why I enjoyed Man of Steel, but at the same time, it wasn't quite the Superman movie I was wanting. I hope you join me next time when I cover Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. And until then, this is Uncle Joel saying, 
stay tangible.